George Washington's Birthday, A Mostly True Tale. When George Washington went to sleep Friday night, he was six years old. When he woke up on Saturday, he was seven. It's my birthday, he thought. Happy birthday to me. Fact. George carried a lot, cared a lot about the weather and later in life recorded temperatures in his diary every day. George went down to breakfast. He peered out the kitchen door and checked the temperature. Another cold day, he said to his mother, but I guess there's nothing special about that. Certainly not, she said. Now eat your porridge and mind the baby. After breakfast, George went to the library for his morning lessons. Get to work, George, said his half-brother, Augustine. I am working, said George. And don't blot your copybook, tyrant, muttered George under his breath. George was usually very good at arithmetic, but not this morning. Augustine marked his paper. All wrong, he said with a sigh. You'll never amount to anything. Some day I'll be the boss of you, said George, but he made sure his brother couldn't hear. Down here, fact. George did not go to school regularly. He took some lessons from a teacher nearby and also may have been taught by his older half-brother, Augustine, who had been schooled in England. And yes, George was usually very good at arithmetic. All right. George gave up on his lessons and went outside to visit the horses. He patted his father's old dray. She snorted at him. When I'm older, I'll ride a horse even bigger than you, said George. He imagined what he would name his own horse when he got older. Then George noticed how cold it was. I bet I'm turning blue, he thought. Lightning? Charger? Snow? Fact. George was over six feet tall when he grew up, and he rode very tall horses, too. One of his favorite horses was called Blueskin. A horse named Blueskin. To warm himself up, George started tossing stones into the river. Some birthday toss. This is, George said. A friend of his brother's strode by. Bet you can't throw one of those all the way across the river, said the young man. Bet I can, said George. He screwed up his eyes and made a birthday wish. Then he leaned back, wound up, and threw the stone all the way to the other side of the Rappahannock River. Lordy, that's pretty good for a six-year-old, said the young man, and he ran off. George was so peeved at being called a six-year-old that he tried to toss another stone across the river. It sank before it got halfway over. <laughs> Myth. After George died, a legend grew up that he was so strong he was able to throw a stone across the Rappahannock River, but that would have been very hard to do. The Rappahannock ran alongside the Washington family farm, but where George lived, the river is about 200 feet across. Okay. By the time he got home, George was cold and grumpy and ready for some sweet tea by the fire. He waved to his father, working in the orchard. Glad to see you, son, said George's father. You can help me prune these cherry trees. But Papa, George began. Fetch a hatchet, said his father. George fetched a hatchet. He hacked off old tree branches. It was hard work. His hand ached. His back was sore. This is no way to spend a birthday, thought George. I'm so mad I could just... <sighs> Uh-oh. See what he did? Hmm. George's father strode over to his son. Who did this? He asked, though George thought the answer must be pretty obvious. Don't you know what day it is? asked George. It's Saturday, said his father, and I'd advise that you think before you speak again. 
George figured he better confess. Father, said George at last, I cannot, at last, I cannot tell a lie. It was I who chopped down the tree. George always used his best grammar when he was in trouble. His father sighed. I'm glad you told the truth, son, he said. George started to smile. But I'm not happy about this tree. George stopped smiling. I suppose you'd better chop it up now that the damage is done, his father said, and put it in the woodshed to dry. Myth. This story about George is just a legend, too. But George was always a very truthful man, so people like to believe it is true. The woodshed was across a little creek from the cherry orchard. Back and forth, George carried the heavy loads of wood crossing the icy creek each time. Hope I never have to do this again, he said to himself. Fact. In one of the most important battles of the Revolutionary War, George had to cross the Delaware River many times in boats carrying very heavy loads in order to defeat the British. At last he finished his work. Now clean your face and hands and powder your wig and occupy yourself gainfully until dinner time, said his father. Myth. Many people believe that George Washington wore a wig, but he did not. When he got older, he powdered his white hair to make himself look more distinguished. George went to his room. He got out a piece of paper and started writing. But George wasn't sure this is what his father would call gainful occupation. Be it known that in good time my birthday will be hailed and celebrated at a grand and elegant dinner attended by multitudes and fact. Almost a hundred years after George turned seven, his birthday was commemorated by his friend General Lafayette at a grand and elegant dinner in Washington, D.C. So he thought and he thought and he came up with some other ideas, ideas he believed his father would like. Think before you speak. When you sit down, keep your feet firm and even. Keep your nails clean and short. If you cough, sneeze, sigh, or yawn, do it not loud. Fact. George really did write a list he called 110 Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior, and these are some of his actual rules. He carried the list around with him to help him remember how to be a gentleman. He probably did not start writing the rules when he was seven years old, but by the age of 16, he had written them all. He worked so hard on the li his list that he did not hear the bell for dinner. George, called his mother, get down here at once. George hurried down the stairs. When he opened the door to the dining room, he got a mighty surprise. Happy birthday, George! said his family. Ha ha! The family sat down to dinner and had a grand feast in honor of the birthday boy. Fact. The Washingtons would not have thrown a party for George, but they might have had a large family dinner on his birthday. I thought you had all forgotten, said George. His mother gave him a squeeze. How could anyone forget your birthday, George Washington? She said. Oh, Mama. You said, George, you only say that because you're my mother. But to tell the truth, nobody did forget George Washington's birthday ever again. Let's see, February 22nd. And that's the story. So this is a fiction, fiction version of his real life. But there's a lot of true stuff in this. So that tells a little bit more about it. And this was called George Washington's Birthday.